Alright, now this may very well be the most boring video that I will ever make for StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void, but bear with me, okay? This is really important. Today, we're gonna be talking about the optimal settings in StarCraft 2 to play the one versus one multiplayer and the settings that I run with every single time I play the game. Now, the reason why I am making this video is because every single week I receive questions on Twitter, in the live stream chat, and even from people that I am coaching up to like Platinum League or so on what settings they should be running with and, you know, how come they can't select the enemy buildings. Alright, so first off, I personally run on the highest graphic settings that the game has to offer and the reason for that is simple. I make a lot of videos and people, you know, watch those videos as well and people rather watch something that's pretty over something that looks awful. However, if your main goal is to improve on the ladder, you should really consider throwing all these settings to the bare minimum or maybe go for so-called hybrid settings. Now, you can just simply Google those if you are interested what that means. But the reasoning behind why you want to consider going for the lowest settings if all you are looking for is improvement is that you will remove all of the clutter that is not important in the game and you will only be left over with the bare minimum. Now after playing a couple of games you won't even really notice it anymore and it will really just become easier to see exactly what is going on on the screen without all of the pretty explosions. On top of that a lot of the professional gamers love running on the lowest of lowest settings not just because it reduces the clutter but also that in some you know late game situations they oftentimes run with 144 hertz monitors and they just simply want to maintain that frame rate so if all you are looking for is you know to optimize the performance and to rank up as high as possible you might definitely want to consider you know lowering these settings as much as you possibly can now i personally once again run on extreme and the highest quality settings the game has to offer because i need things to look pretty Alrighty, next up we got sound. Now, most of this is really just personal preference. One thing though that I would highly recommend you go for is to go for the highest sound quality the game has to offer, as well as the most sound channels that the game has to offer. And one of the things that I personally do turn off are going to be the ambient sounds, just because I really don't like the random noises that you do sometimes here, so I usually run the games with those turned off. As far as voice chat goes, I don't think anyone really uses this, so you may just want to consider turning this off all the way. Next up, we do have a very important tab, and that is going to be mouse and keyboard. Now, as far as my personal sensitivity goes, I got 51% in StarCraft 2, I got 6 out of 11 in Windows, and I run at a DPI of 800. Now, the DPI is basically the speed at which your mouse moves at. And it's really important that you try and lower that. I would not really go any higher than say 1500 and most of the pro gamers seem to hover around 800 to 1200 or so. Sure, there's going to be, you know, a couple of exceptions, but a lot of the mouse manufacturers out there, you know, obviously market their mice to be as precise as possible and it goes up to like, I don't know, like 6000 plus DPI. I would highly recommend not going over 1500 as you will just simply start, you know, going inaccurate. And personally, like I said, I run at 800. I've lowered it systematically over the course of a couple of months and it's what I'm used to right now and what I definitely feel most comfortable with. Next up, we got the mouse sensitivity. Now, I got it set to 51%, which is a little bit of an odd number, but I got it set at 51% for good reason. Once upon a time, someone did the math on it and I will leave the article down below in the description of this video, but once upon a time, someone did the math and it turned out that if you are rounding up your uh, mouse sensitivity to increments of 5%, you may very well be skipping pixels and not having the optimal accuracy. So what that basically means is that you should be looking uh, to basically round up your um, mouse sensitivity to something like 51, 52, 53 or 54 percent and not really round it up to like increments of 5. Now one very important thing that I would highly recommend upping as well compared to the default settings is going to be the mouse scroll speed. I got it set to 69 percent it's an easy number to remember, guys. What can I say? But the issue is that the default setting, I believe, is at like 30% or so. It is much too, uh, much too small and much too uh, slow to actually use properly in a game. You will notice that if you watch any of the professional gamer streams, they've got this setting up at least a little bit. And basically what it is, is that when you touch the corner of the screen uh, with your mouse, it will start scrolling towards the next scene. And the default, I believe, is like 30% or so. Um, it's much too slow and just simply up it a bunch, you'll be much better afterwards. Next up is the gameplay tab. Now this is the one tab that gets a little bit more complicated and where there are a couple of extremely important settings that are turned off by default. So this is what I am running with. I got show alerts on, 
no particular reason not to really turn this on. It will basically just give you additional information on upgrades and whatnot finished. But the first one that I would highly recommend turning on is going to be the build grid. This will help you put down expansions in particular, and it just makes placing down buildings significantly easier. This is one of those settings that I believe not to be turned on by default. Next up, we got the allow show worker status. Very, very helpful um, a little tick to use as well, just because it gives you more information about your workers. The first one to disable is going to be the simple command card. There's no reason to run with the simple command card. Just pay attention to the bottom right corner and learn your hotkeys. Much, much easier. Next up, we got the show current order indicator. This is basically when you are moving around with your army and when you give them a command that you look away for a little while, you can still see the indicator uh, show up in the game and you can see where your army is actually currently headed. No particular reason to turn this off either. Next up, we got the select all larva. This means that you will automatically select all larva whenever you're selecting a single hatchery. Now, one of the things that may make it a little bit uh, more complicated is that if you are playing at a higher level, this may be something you want to turn off if you want to individually build out of every single hatchery. And while you can still do that, um, for most people, it's probably better to, you know, just simply select all larva. I personally do it as well. No particular reason to turn it off. Then the first and, like, most important thing in the entire settings overview screen that I do not understand to be turned off by default is the enable enemy unit selection. What this means is that, say you are scouting a Protoss player, right, and you are, um, I don't know, using a scan or maybe you're flying in an Observer or an Overlord, you can actually click on your opponent's buildings to see what is building. By default, you cannot differentiate what building is actually going up just looking at the size of the building. You can't really see if it's a gateway or a starport or a robotics facility or any of those kinds of things. You need to turn this one on. Extremely important. And this is the main setting that even people up to like Platinum League do not know. Like this makes this makes the game significantly easier. It is very, very, very important. We also got the experience points. Now, this may seem like unnecessary clutter. But the issue is that oftentimes through the fog of war, so even when the screen is dark, you can still see if you manage to kill someone. Uh, or something in the game. So display experience points actually does help out in that regard. And then allow window restore is basically like a little restoration that happens if a game, you know, happens to start and you got the game minimized. No particular reason to turn this off um, either. Now, here's something that I am personally not using, but I would recommend you to use. And that is the show unit life bars. I would recommend having this on at always. And the reason for that is because it once again gives you additional information. The reason why I personally have got set it to, or I've got it set to damage is once again because I got, you know, content to make and people watch my content. I want things to look pretty, so I'm running with damage, which will only show my weakened units. But always is actually just simply a superior setting. I uh, would highly recommend turning that one on if you are, you know, looking to improve as much as possible. I believe the default is set to normal. That is no good. Don't run with normal. Run with damaged or run with always. Probably want to go with always. It's going to be a little weird at first when you first try it out, but it's much better a little bit later on. Then I got the control groups. Now, you probably want to make this unclickable. Very, very, very important um, just to get some extra screen real estate. You shouldn't be setting hotkeys and then, you know, clicking on the actual control group thingy in-game either. Probably just want to make this unclickable. Some people may want to run with hidden as well. This will get a little bit more stay, but I do like uh, I do like having some vision of that. And then the next one, the second most important option in the game as well, besides the enemy unit selection, is going to be the flyer helper. I believe this one is by default set to selected. You need to have this one at always. What this means is that things such as, for example, corrosive bios are significantly easier to land. Basically, when there is a flying unit out in the game, say like a medevac or something, you will see a little line going to the bottom of the unit with a little circle on the ground. That is where you need to aim your corrosive bio in order to perfectly land it at where the medevac is currently located. I believe this is the setting that is on uh, either selected or non by default, and it just makes it impossible to hit air units. One of the most important settings, I've coached people up to like Diamond League that are not aware of this. Very, very important. Now, as far as the color options go, I am running with white and color intensity 11. Uh, you may want to consider turning color blight mode on, but I've, I've turned it off ever since, you know, we had the team color intensity uh, additions to the game. I always ran with color blind mode on, just because, you know, people once again watch the videos. I'm not personally color blind, but I want you guys to be able to watch the videos as well, right? But this is what I'm running with. 
Next up, we got the social tab. Now, not a whole lot of things I would highly recommend changing around here, but one thing that I would recommend is under privacy right here, set status to busy when playing a game. And what, what this basically means is that as soon as you enter a game, any kind of game mode, you will be set to busy and any friends in your friend list can't actually message you at the time. And, uh, you know, it's just gonna, you know, allow you to be more focused on your actual game. And as far as language and region goes, I just got those set up to default as well as the observer and replay information, I also have got those set up to default. Now, as far as the hotkeys go, I do have a detailed guide on that already. I will leave a link to it down below in the description of this video, because it will explain it much better than I can do right here. Because honestly, the hotkeys are a very, very important part of StarCraft 2 to have an in-depth look at as well. Anyhow, I hope that at the very least some of you have found this video useful. If it was useful, definitely make sure you hit that like button down below. And while you're at it, consider hitting up the subscribe button as well as following me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are down below in the description. And other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? And I will see you in the next StarCraft 2 video.